Welcome. My name is Trina Boyce, and I have a very special guest today. Her name is Valerie Loveless. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. So Valerie is an author, a blogger, a vlogger, a YouTuber, a podcaster. Uh, what else? I, you do everything. That's about it. Whatever suits me at the, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I thought you would be a perfect guest because I've had a lot of fiction authors, but I haven't had a children's author. And I know you do both. Um, right. Let's see. Let's start off with what do you think is the difference between children's fiction and any other kind of fiction? Honestly, um, as an author, I found writing, <clears throat> excuse me, the children's books more difficult because wow. you have to be, um, they're so short. And so you have to say a lot with very few words. And that was difficult for me to do. <laughs> and you also have to say it in words that young children will understand. And it has to sound cute. And so there's actually a lot more revising to do with children's books, in my opinion, um, than with just regular novels. Wow. Well, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. Years ago, I dated this guy who was a wordsmith and I asked him, can you describe yourself in one word? And he said, he thought for a minute and he said, concise. Yeah. I thought that's so clever. Yeah. I love that. So you're right. Every word has to really pack a punch. Right. But you also have to use vocabulary that children can understand. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's such a great insight. Cause I think a lot of us just think, Oh, children's books, you know, that's easy. I, I know a lot of people do think that, um, writing a children's book is the easiest thing in the world, but, um, it's not. <laughs> so how did you get started? Um, my, I have a very creative family. Um, there's, uh, there's seven kids and we're all wow. really, re really creative. Um, and, uh, my sisters write children's books as well. And, um, my other sister is also an excellent artist. And so, um, we just kind of started working together. And so my other two sisters have some children's books that they collaborated on. They have a lot more than I do. I've only done two. Um, and, uh, so yeah, we just kind of, you know, talked about it and worked together on a whim, really, <laughs> which you can do nowadays with digital publishing and that sort of thing. So, right. Yeah. So are the illustrators of your books, your sister? Yes. Well, so, um, the one book that I don't have listed on my website right now, because I'm working on getting it revised, um, so that it fits better on a digital platform, like a, a Kindle. Um, um, I actually illustrated that one myself, but Wow. Yeah, you see that one versus the one my sister did, the one about the little girl with the dolls, um, Annabelle Loves Babies, uh, you would see that she's definitely much, much more talented than I am. I can get by, I can draw some pretty decent stick figures, but <laughs> she's definitely the better artist than me. Wow. It sounds like you really are a talented family. That's awesome. So when you say digital, are all of your books on Amazon Kindle or do you also have some traditionally published books? So my, my novel, Enduring Promises of the Heart, is a traditionally published book. Um, and it's a novel. It's not a children's book. And my two children's books are just on um, Amazon. Uh-huh. And what has your experience been between self-publishing on Amazon versus traditional publishing? <clears throat> well, um, let's see. <laughs> How do I quantify this? And it's definitely very, very different. You're not beholden to anybody when you publish your own book. Right. Amazon literally takes anything. <laughs> um, I've seen some pretty, um, you know, unfinished stuff on there that is just full of errors and everything. So, I mean, you, you can put up whatever you want on Amazon. Um, when you have a publisher, they have lots of standards and, you know, you go through a lot of editing and, and that sort of thing. It takes a long, long time. Right. Because they have so many checks and balances to make sure that they're, you know, creating a really great product. So that's the major difference. Have you found that your market is more limited one or the other? Um, 
Or for example, do you have a greater distribution with Amazon or with traditional? Or have you found that they both just had different markets? Well, yeah, and what we've found is that um, children's books don't actually particularly do well on just a digital format. Uh, you would think with uh, the <clears throat> childhood addictions to um, digital devices nowadays, right. that, that would be the ideal place to sell children's books. Um, and I'm not really, I haven't done enough research to know if it's because the market is saturated or just because um, it's, it's probably not uh, addicting enough, you know, uh, reading a book like this versus playing those addicting games to kids, would be my <laughs> guess. Um, but uh, yeah, when you, I mean, when you have a publisher, you know, and you, and you have books that you can sell in um, brick and mortar stores, you, you, have a, you have a broader audience. And, and I think there's something about having a physical book um, in the child's genre that um, is better for that because they can be in schools and they can be in libraries and places where kids are going to be reading books. I don't think very many kids anymore are reading books at home. So um, if that would be my advice to anybody, I know you didn't ask, but that would be no, my I advice. Was going to ask. You can publish, you know, a real book and have it printed. And if you really, really want to get your children's book out there, that you need to do that. It's still incredibly difficult, but that would be my advice. Right. No, that was great. And I was going to ask you, what is your advice for writers who would like to be published, either traditionally or self-published or vanity presses or whatever? Just how do you get out there? What's your advice to them? Well, um, I think that in, in this age of digital marketing, and like I said, anybody can put anything on Amazon. It's quick and um, easy. If you really want to stand out, you really need to have a polished product. You really need to have, um, your books need to be edited. They need to be, um, have proper grammar and um, they need to be really clean and polished if you really, really want to stand out. And your, um, your illustrations need to be really stellar as well. I see a lot of self-published children's books on Amazon that are kind of like, somebody drew them on Microsoft paint app on their computer or something, you know, and, um, and I know they're just giving these books away for practically for free, but if, if you want to do more than that, that's what you need to do. Okay. Well, that's great advice. Okay. So my next question is what inspires you? I'm always so fascinated with fiction authors. How do you come up with stories and characters and worlds? We're crazy. <laughs> We're crazy. I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I just, like I said, we have a really creative family. I've always got <clears throat> some dialogue or story going on in my head. I think it's, it's probably unusual for the general population, but probably not for authors. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, I, <laughs> that's all I can say. My brain doesn't. I, I mean, when I, when I, uh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely wired differently. Um, I, I can just be walking down the street and see a particular type of tree. And it reminds me of something that I read about a long time ago that reminds me of something. And then all of a sudden I start to develop this story in my head with characters and it just comes out of nowhere. I guess, I mean, I guess it comes out of past experiences and that sort of thing, but um, it, it probably seems like it comes out of nowhere to other people. <laughs> because all of my books are nonfiction. And so I think, I, I guess I have a very didactic personality. I always want to teach and learn. And I don't, I can't think of all of these characters. And I, anyway, I'm not a fiction author. Yeah. So, but you're also a YouTuber. And I noticed you've got a lot of followers. So for the authors that are watching this that already have their book, what are some tips that you can share to help them market their book? YouTube being one tool. Um, let's see. <clears throat> you, a good way to market your book is um, through uh, newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of authors do newsletter swaps. And so basically what that entails is you have your weekly or your monthly newsletter and they have theirs. And you highlight their book on yours and vice versa. Right. 
Um, and that seems to work really well for a lot of authors, particularly if you're both in the same genre. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of genre, genres, especially like Regency and romance and stuff that get a really like cult like following. I've and noticed those, that. Yeah, it works really well for them. Um, and then just try to um, market to find your people, you know, and, and that's kind of the hardest part that I can't tell people exactly how to do that. But um, you don't want to put your book out there in front of people who aren't interested in that topic and kind of like force them to read your book. And then you're just going to get a bunch of bad reviews because it's, it's not their style. It's not, mm -hmm. they're not your people. So if you can find your people like Facebook groups and um, YouTube channels and that sort of thing, that's where you want to go um, to proclaim, you know, your new releases and that sort of thing. So what would you advise an author like yourself who has different genres and different audiences? For example, you have children's books, but you also do other, you know, older fiction for YA right. and old. So how do you reach out, especially if you have a newsletter, because yeah. your target audience would be different. Or do you have two different newsletters? You definitely would probably want to have two different newsletters at, or at least I do everything under my name. I don't do pin names or anything. Everything is just under Valerie Loveless. Um, but how I kind of work that with marketing is you can have different lists that you send. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's all from the same website, but it's different lists that goes to different groups of people. And that's kind of how, how you can kind of um, separate things on the different uh, social media websites too. So, you know, you may have like a different type of following on Instagram than you do on Twitter, as well as having multiple Instagrams and Twitters. I've noticed that. I found different social medias are more or less engaging depending on what it is, right. depending on my content as well. So for example, it seems like Instagram is just booming, whereas Twitter seems not stagnant, but it's just not maybe the newest, greatest thing. So is there a social media that you would recommend for a beginner? Where to start? Um, I would start with all of them and I would start growing all of them as much as you can before your book even comes out. The sooner you should start marketing yourself as an author or a writer um, long, long before your book comes out. Um, and that can be difficult, but it, it kind of seems like, well, how do I find a following if I, if I don't have anything to give them, if I have no right. content? So kind of what you would want to do is kind of network. You want to follow people who are maybe authors or who like authors who write similar books to you or what you want to write and that sort of thing. Talk to them, leave thoughtful comments on, on their posts and that sort of thing. Um, so that you kind of, you know, develop like a relationship with the people that will eventually hopefully be your people. Right. That's really good counsel. And in fact, for authors or writers who want to find a traditional publisher, I'm finding also that they kind of want a, an author who has an established platform, yes. which is tricky because if you haven't published anything, right. how do you do that? But if, for example, you're writing a book, and even if it's fiction, let's say you have a character who is experiencing depression, you could begin a blog or a YouTube channel or great right. content on your social media accounts about that topic and then people will find you who are interested in that topic and you create that platform so then when you submit query letters or you know approach even literary agents you could say i have this following people who are interested in this one specific topic and publishers love that have you found that in your experience as well yes i mean it definitely helps um if if you have a, if, say if they had to choose between two books that were similar, but one author already had a great social media following and, and uh, had proven themselves that they know how to market themselves and know how to navigate that, I would suspect they might go with that person if, if it's between two very similar books. Right. I agree. Uh, and, and 
assuming that the writing is equivalent right because it's all about not just numbers anymore but engagement right. and so you want to find that niche whatever it is and then start engaging and building a community or a tribe and yes. yeah publishers exactly. love that yeah right. and, and within the first week after i had signed my contract to have my novel published that's what they wanted to know they wanted to know how are you going to how are you going to market this book who are you going to market it to? Um, what resources do you already have? So, Yeah, and you know what's frustrating is people think that if they get a traditional publisher that all their marketing is taken care of. And that's not true anymore at all. No. You're, because what you just said, they'll say, well, what are you going to do to market it? And you're right. like, oh, I thought you were going to do that. So what marketing techniques have you found to be the most successful or profitable? Um, one thing I like doing is I wrote a um, prequel for my novel. Uh -huh. um, so my novel is a story within a story. It's about an author who writes um, some kind of saucy stories for her local paper. And she does it anonymously. And so as you read the story about her life, you're also reading her stories that she publishes and they're intertwined in all the chapters. And so what I did with my prequel was I wrote exclusively um, the Gazette stories, but before the novel happened. Um, and so I used that, uh, I gave it away. I just gave it away on, or I still am giving it away. <laughs> you can go get on my website for free right now. And um, so I used that as material that um, people can get um, introduced to my writing style mm -hmm. and kind of like, what is my novel about before they actually go and pay for it, you know, and purchase it. Um, and that's worked really, really well. And not only do you gain, um, hopefully book sales, but you also gain followers, you know, um, they'll, they'll follow you and, and, and want to see what else you come out with. Yeah, I love that idea. That's really mm -hmm. great. And especially people love free stuff, free content. <laughs> And, but you're right, it exposes them to your writing style and they get to know you and then they're like, what else does she have? Right. So that's and of course you have to idea. leave them with a cliffhanger. <laughs> if you want to find out what happened, you got to get the book. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. So um, I was looking on your website, in fact, and also on Facebook, and I noticed that you know, you invite people to join your newsletter, which is great because you said you do the newsletter. I mean, all of that is kind of, um, basic. Everybody has something like that. Um, but um, what is it that you do for your readers once they are like raving fans? Do you give them extra little freebies or uh, in the newsletter, do you give them coupons and that kind of stuff? Well, um, I do like to send them, um, when I do try to like build my audience, there's different platforms you can use. Like my my book cave and book, book hub, um, book bub, d different places like that where um, you can, that's where I, I give away those prequels and stuff. And then they can sign up for my newsletter in exchange. Um, and uh, so when <clears throat> um, I lost my train of thought, because <laughs> I was so busy thinking about what those websites were called. What were we talking about? <laughs> Just uh, do you give them coupons and special? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what I did with uh, that prequel was like the, the, in the story, in the novel, uh, it comes out in weekly installments in the newspaper. And oh. so I released it, and I couldn't do weekly. I, You know, writing a, a, a chapter basically and editing it and stuff and getting out a week is pretty rough. Yeah. Um, but I did it monthly installments just like in the book. Um, and those were all free. And then once it was all done, I put it together in the book and then that's in, in a small like novella size. And that's what I give away. Um, and then I also like to share, um, like <clears throat> the giveaways and a lot of the giveaways include gift card giveaways. You know, you get, not only do you get like a sample book or even a whole book from a bunch of other different authors that I go in with. Um, but you can, you can be entered to win a, a gift card and they're usually pretty good, like 50 to, and I did one that was $300. Wow. Um, so I try not to harass my followers too much, you know, <laughs> I want to keep them in the know without, you know, 
constantly barraging them with information they probably just really don't need to know. But um, I also want them to be able to win money too if, if they can. Yeah, so $300 is a lot. Was that out yeah. of your pocket or did you get a sponsor? It was, so we, there was, um, let's see, that, that one did come out of my own pocket for that one. And there was like six other authors. And so we gave away a copy of our book, oh. full novels. Uh -huh. And, and then they also got the gift cards. So it was a really, it was a great giveaway. That is great. Yeah. Nice. All yeah, right. So it's Here's worth it to follow your favorite authors. If, if they do that kind of stuff regularly, you know, Right. And I know um, Goodreads also has lots of freebies and contests. Do you participate with Goodreads? I haven't done any in Goodreads yet. Their promotions used to be free, I noticed, because I would run those all the time. Right. It's a little contest that you could pick, you know, to run over a weekend, a week, or even a month, and it exposes people to you. But now I've noticed, the other day I was checking, and now they're charging authors yeah. to do that. So, which is kind of a bummer, but it's great for readers who are excited about meeting new authors and getting free mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, okay, so here's my last question. This is a question I ask all of my guests, and that is, what is it that you do every day to improve yourself just a little bit more? So every day, become your next best person. Um, I really enjoy um, studying history a lot. Oh. Um, but I'm also a little bit of an odd duck because I don't like just regular history. <laughs> I like, <laughs> I like, um, obscure history. Um, and I'm, I, this improves me because, <laughs> um, I, I just find it incredibly interesting and you do, you do learn a lot and, um, I'm kind of a big picture thinker. Um, and so I find that, you know, learning historical things kind of puts a lot of what's going on today's current events in perspective. Um, and you know, just having perspectives like that can't hurt with, uh, your own personal development and growth. Yeah. Do you think history repeats itself? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So what yeah. phase are we in right now? Which history are we getting ready to repeat? <laughs> Politically, culturally. Oh, culturally. I, uh, I hope, I hope we're not too close to, you know, the fall of Rome. I, but. That's right. <laughs> A lot of, uh, his, well, historians and doomsday, yes. I guess, people say that we are. We're right on that break, right. which is not good. Yeah, I mean, we are having, we're definitely having a decline in our, our culture and our, our culture's morality and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, you could definitely compare it to that. Right. I mean, financially, economically, right. uh, in true. terms of the government, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of different ways. You're right. So you mentioned morality. Writing your books, uh, writing clean books is important to you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I definitely um, am not going to write a book that doesn't reflect who I am in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> um and also, it was important to me that anyone could read it, and I wouldn't feel ashamed, my mother, my grandma, my daughter. <laughs> I think so. that's important, too, because there's enough garbage in the world. It's yeah. great to meet Definitely. an author like you who wants to contribute more good to the world. Right. I love that. So thank and you. I, I also wanted to make sure that my stories um, were uplifting, that they were bright and airy feeling. Yeah. Um, because I just don't feel like we need any more drama. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. plenty of that in the world. There's plenty of that in the media. Um, it's an escape to a place where you can feel safe and feel happy. That's really true because we live in a world that's very heavy right now. And right. they have found that like during the Great Depression or recessions where people are feeling stress and weight on their shoulders, that more people end up going to see movies or reading fiction to escape. And right. so I like that there's something light that, and positive that you're offering to the world. And again, thank you for being one of those kinds of authors. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So tell everybody where we can find you and what you're going to be doing next. Okay. Are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can find me on Facebook. My page is just Valerie Loveless. Um, on YouTube, my channel is called Valerie Loveless Channel. On Instagram, my handle is The V Loveless. Twitter, I am at Valerie Loveless. And my website is www.valerieloveless.info. I N F O. Oh, okay. And okay. you can actually find all of those links to everywhere else just at my site. Okay. Good to know. Make it easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, and thanks. And then all of uh, my scoop is down below in the description. So you know where you can find all of my projects and that kind of thing. What are you working on next? Oh, I'm always working on a lot of stuff. So I just um, submitted the sequel to my novel. Um, so we'll see if that gets picked up by the publisher. Um, and I am working on a science fiction right now. Wow. Um, kind of uh, a mind-bendy one. So <laughs> with a little bit of romance in it. <laughs> Sounds so fun. I, I think I'm going to self-publish that one. So that one will probably be out six months to a year. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine writing something like that. I'll watch a movie. You know, I do movie reviews and I'll watch something and I think, oh, I wish I could think of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so instead, I just review it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Valerie, for not only what you're doing, but for spending a few minutes to share what you're doing with us and to teach us a little bit about how to become a successful author in the world today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And it's lovely to meet you. Oh, you too. Well, I will see you more on Facebook. Yes, you will. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.